So our next session is all about looking at what it takes to reboot and recover, scaling back to full strength and delivering a consistent customer experience across different markets in a region as diverse as Asia. So I'd like to welcome our three panelists, all virtual today. We have Calvin Shi from uh, China, our GM for FCM. Uh, Ken Shiraishi, we're welcoming him back into the panel, our GM for Japan, FCM, and Puneet Puri, our GM for India, FCM. Welcome, guys. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, we can hear you. Yes, we can. Yes. And technology working at its best. There you guys uh -huh. are. Great. Great to have you here with us. Thank you all. So let's jump straight um, into the session and talk a little bit about what it's taking to recover and reboot in your particular markets. Um, so Puneet, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about what's happening um, with the recovery in India as a market today. And also, what are some of the changes that you're seeing in the travelers' expectations now that travel is recovering at speed? Great. Thank you, Vicky, for the great introduction and the question. Uh, so as I reflect back, a lot of things have evolved in the last uh, couple of years on the personal and professional front. Uh, and there has been a great learning out of it, for sure. Talking about pre-COVID times from an Indian business traveler perspective, India has always been a high-touch market on account of specific uh, travel requirements. Uh, for example, an Indian traveler needs a visa for most of the countries they have to travel globally. Hence, uh, the obvious choice for them becomes an assisted model. This was I'm talking about pre-COVID times. Having said that, you know, we have also seen uh, quite a demand uh, for technology front, which is self-booking tool, and uh, which was going in tandem when, when it comes to assisted and uh, SPT mode. So talking about travel during COVID times, or you can say post wave two and wave three, we are witnessing a high demand uh, on assisted model for managing end-to-end -end travel requirement. This is predominantly on account of adhering to COVID protocols laid by various authorities, and also on account of duty of care through our FC car program, and especially on the women safety front for the car program, what they adopt. Uh, we also see a high demand for visa requirements uh, which is being done through our in-house visa team. And as we moved out of wave three, and thanks to huge vaccination drive, uh, which went across India, and also uh, thankfully with the ease of COVID protocols, uh, we could uh, witness that a lot of confidence has been induced uh, with the Indian travelers. And now we can see a mix of requirements where the demand is for assisted plus uh, on the technology front, which is SBT. So uh, I can clearly say that the demand is now more blended and we are moving towards this, uh, old times, what I can say. Uh, coming on to the part B of your question, uh, as how India is recovering as a market today, India is recovering very well. We have seen a huge demand in travel as March, we closed at nearly 107% of pre-COVID levels, and March was the highest ever month since 2019 for us. So that's uh, quite amazing what we look at. Uh, I would also like to draw your attention uh, with reference to which are the international destinations which are in demand. So we see a strong demand, uh, you know, which, which is for the US, UK, Australia, and from a domestic perspective, uh, Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore, and Chennai. We also see a huge demand for MICE requirements. Uh, and last month, we executed nearly about 85 uh, small and large meetings, which is, again, quite encouraging. And the last point I want to close uh, my answer is uh, to share the quarter-wise trend, business trends, how it has been in the last nine months. So Q1, we did about 32.3% uh, versus pre-COVID levels. Q2, we improvised uh, by nearly about 58% levels. Q3 has been quite encouraging again uh, at 85% levels versus pre-COVID times. 
so all in all i can say india is recovering very well and we are geared up to welcome all the travelers again back in the market thank you that's fantastic news we need to see the market recovering i just wanted to touch on something that you said about the fcm car program in india and maybe for some of our audience here today they might not understand that can you just uh, elaborate a little bit on that for us certainly vicky so uh, you know we, we have a specialized fc car programs wherein we have tie-ups with various vendors all across the country so we have nearly about 16 vendors uh, and wherein we manage their stringent slas and we manage end-to-end -end car re requirements for the customers so a customer doesn't need to have multiple vendors you know uh, with various agreements managing them so we will take that onus and we will manage all the requirements we will understand the requirements and then we will create a solution for them that what exactly will suit them and this also has uh, you know support for the women travelers wherein you know if a woman is traveling late at, uh, late in the evening after 7 pm she will be called again and to check if the car has uh, you know has reported on time and if she has uh, reached on time to the destination and the same thing has been reported on the QC uh, process as well and it gets reported to the travel manager. Fantastic. Thanks for that. And I can attest, I spent um, three years in India living before I relocated to Singapore six years ago. And I used uh, the FCM car service a lot while I was traveling. And it was fantastic and really helped me to feel pretty safe and secure while I was moving my way around. So thanks for that, Puni. Um, Calvin, if we kind of look back nine to 12 months ago in China, you know, Bertrand mentioned it in his opening address. China was kind of our lifeline in the region. Domestic travel in China was back at kind of 80 to 90 percent, um, while the rest of the region was pretty much at an absolute standstill. And then fast forward to now, um, you know, we're seeing recovery rates in Southeast Asia. Uh, for April, Singapore with the drop of the VTLs means that we'll be back at about 80 percent pre-COVID uh, travel volumes this month in April. And in Malaysia, with borders opening, we'll actually be back at about 100% of pre-COVID travel in Malaysia for this month. But in China now, it's a very different situation. So, Kelvin, tell us a little bit about the journey that you've been on in the market. Thanks, Vicky. Yeah, actually, I think China now is in a quite different picture. Um, or even more specifically, I would say it's a difficult time in China, uh, especially following the recent lockdown in Shanghai, which has lasted for more than one month up to now. Uh, and behind this, I think, of course, it's because um, our authorities stickiness with the zero COVID uh, policy. Um, and I know this is quite different comparing to what uh, most of the countries is doing now in, in the world uh, by reopening the border. And then questions may, uh, may come, why still zero COVID policy? Uh, I know this can lead to endless debate, even domestically in, in China nowadays, but I just want to provide some objective view from uh, my side. I think mainly there are two reasons. Number one is we have quite a large population. Uh, but less medical resources comparing to a lot of um, developed countries in the world. And second thing is about, um, although the overall vaccination ratio in China is high, it's around 90%. Um, but actually, if you're looking at elder people about 85 years old, um, I think the percentage is still quite low. It's only around 30%. So uh, I think our government is trying to buy more time so that they can enhance medical resources. Uh, and meanwhile, to persuade more elder people to take the vaccine as soon as possible. Um, and I do believe that China will reopen uh, as soon as we, we think the condition allows. Um, but actually, we have seen some of positive signs uh, re recently. Um, for example, Hong Kong being the pilot city in China, we've seen they start to relax their um, restriction policies in, in recent months. And I think the painful lesson learned in Shanghai is also pushing our government to rethink about our strategy, uh, whether we have to stick to that or maybe we need to twist this uh, a little bit to cope with the uh, new virus variant. Um, and also entering into May, actually, uh, if we watch news, we will see that China uh, is going to resume a lot of flights, uh, I mean, direct flights with North America, Europe, as well as Australia uh, entering into May. 
And we know there's a restriction of 40% passenger load ratio for international travel in China. So this is going to be uh, to go expired, hopefully in two days time, if there's no further announcement of extension, I hope not. Uh, and then I think this will have a great improvement uh, on the international sector. So, and, and also coming back to uh, traveler experience uh, and the expectations, is there any change in the, uh, the post-COVID world? I think uh, um, I need to split domestic and in international. For domestic travel, uh, two words in my mind is agility and flexibility. Uh, remember before we always educate clients to book your tickets seven days in advance because it's cheap uh, and it's better travel behavior, but now uh, it doesn't work. Most of our travelers in China, they tend to book only one day in advance or even hours in advance uh, because of the uncertainty and change refund uh, are so frequent. Um, and the second thing is uh, we, we, we can see a lot of uh, travelers, they, they prefer to shift from air travel to land transportation, especially in China, uh, railway is quite popular. And people tend to choose rail or private car because they generally think this is easier uh, and safer for them to travel in the post-COVID world. Um, and last but not least, I think uh, because the Chinese travelers, uh, we have so we have relevantly low exposure to Omicron uh, so far comparing to the rest of the world. People are still quite uh, afraid of going abroad. So they really need a lot of consultancy before they make the decision to, to travel. And that um, at FCM, we are providing the dedica uh, designated service model to travelers in China. This is really helpful. Uh, this is really uh, make our travelers feel uh, they know who they are talking to and uh, they can build trust along the journey. And I think it's just important for them to regain the confidence uh, for international travel uh, in the post-COVID world. Uh, that's from me, Vicky. Thanks, Calvin. And uh, how long have you been in lockdown now, Calvin? I think it's more than one month and, and I can only talk to my flowers and plants at home. It's not ideal. Uh, but we have been seeing some turning points uh, from last week. So hopefully we can go out of our neighborhood uh, some point at time in May. Okay, we hope that for you too. But I'm glad you've got a chance to talk to other people other than your flowers and plants today. That's good news for you. It's exciting um, for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Ken, coming across to you, um, in the session earlier with Scott, we were talking about how Japan still takes a pretty mm -hmm. traditional approach when it comes to managing travel in the corporate space. And you mentioned examples of still using paper. I think perhaps we could hit some sustainability goals just by eliminating the paper use in the business in Japan. But do you see things accelerating when we, when we talk about digitalization? Do you see that accelerating in Japan as we come out of the pandemic and return to travel? Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Biki. Um, yes, uh yeah, right after COVID started, obviously all those COVID is a common word, became common word in Japan. And people all of a sudden recognize that, uh, oh, I cannot go to shopping, I cannot go to the restaurant, I cannot go to the bank. And also even people are trying to uh, uh, avoid the queuing at the government office. So um, they are all inconvenient. So that's why people in Japan recognize, oh, we need to digitalize it. And uh, since, because uh, in these days, uh, digitalization in Japan was uh, slow. So after that, so that was a kind of a good thing uh, after the COVID. So digitalization was accelerated. So that's why even a uh, government office, we can uh, get the uh, queuing online. And also, of course, there's a lot of, uh, uh, yeah, we can uh, order the lunch by a uh, uh, smartphone and also online banking. So lots of things uh, 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 accelerated and uh, improved. And uh, so in terms of uh, uh, travel business, I mean, travel market, so still uh, market is slow, but uh, it's, uh, for example, like a domestic uh, uh, According to the carrier, it's a uh, uh, renovation rate is a uh, 60% pre-COVID. So I think it's about to recover. And uh, uh, I heard a civil uh, opinion from the traveler that uh, uh, people recognize already that uh, as Vicky mentioned, oh, paper is not convenient. 
because of they Japanese uh, uh, suddenly get used to the digitalization. So there's more and more uh, requirement from the traveler or company that uh, uh, business travel has to be uh, digitalized. So I think we have a big opportunity and we have a tool to uh, provide the customer to make their uh, travel more easy and also convenient. Thank you, Vicky. Thanks, Ken. <clears throat> So across the board at the moment, we're seeing a big need for a reboot on getting technology adoption back to our travellers, getting the confidence and travellers to start using online booking tools again. Um, and some of the things that we've been focusing on at FCM is around our FCM mobile app, making sure that travellers are using the app to get direct alerts and notifications on their itinerary and any changes to requirements or travel restrictions and also accessing instant chat while they're on the road as well to make sure that they can get a quick answer for things that they need to know while they're on the road. Um, so this is about building back confidence. Um, and while we're talking about technology, at FCM, we've also got um, a global vision, which means working by delivering global consistency, but also taking into account very much the local nuances of each market and the traveler's needs. So Calvin, just coming back to you, what has China been focusing on when it comes to technology to achieve this local vision for us in China? Yes, thanks, Vicky. Uh, I really like the terminology global, uh, but just allow me a few minutes. I want to start from like uh, the situation in China in the past years, because uh, I think uh, as we all know, China has been really at the forefront of uh, digitalization and tech things in the past decade. But uh, mainly it's very focusing on the B2C area comparing to the B2B in the past 10 years. And if you're looking at uh, the B2B area where TMC business is concerned, I think the transformation really started uh, in the recent three to four years. Um, and I think uh, uh, during this period, we've seen a lot of uh, companies writing in China. Uh, they are SaaS making companies. They make softwares to cope with this massive transformation trend in China. And among them, a lot of are doing uh, what we call EMS, meaning expense management system, or there are some players in the uh, pillar of payment. So um, I think nearly until nowadays, all our clients in China are asking us a question, uh, like whether you can, your TMC system can integrate with our expense management system, or even with our OA or ERP system. So it has become a fact, which makes us believe that if you want to uh, do a successful TMC business in China, you, you need to have a proprietary um, and uh, open-ended TMC platform uh, in China. So it's not only about your core competence within your platform, it's more and more about the ability of your system to integrate with the new China, uh, China ecosystem, because systems do talk to each other uh, in the coming uh, decades in China, I think. Then coming back to what we have done in uh, FCM China to fulfill this global strategy, uh, I think first of all, we all know uh, FCM globally has launched the new travel platform called FCM Platform Globally, following our new branding uh, initiative last year. Uh, but due to some regulation barriers, we're not able to deploy directly this global uh, product weight in, in China. Uh, however, we, we, uh, we managed to mirror it in terms of UI and UX, uh, as well as the architecture, uh, with the help of our global tech team, so that we carry the consistency of reporting uh, data flow, duty of care, all those kind of modules uh, with our China client, um, which they really uh, appreciate to follow global consistency in these areas. Uh, however, coming back to the uh, online booking tool itself, or what we call uh, FCM Mobile in China, uh, I think uh, uh, we have been investing heavily in the local tech team as well as the uh, local um, uh, app uh, in, the, in the past two years, uh, because we, we really built it purely and locally in China so that we can tailor this tool uh, mainly for Chinese traveler behavior, such as they want mixed payment with WeChat Pay, 
uh, on Alipay. They want to have the uh, real and the air price comparison in one page, and they want to have uh, OTA flavor layout. All those kind of things we are able to fulfill uh, when when they use our tool for, for their online booking. So, uh, in a nutshell, I think uh, uh, it's thanks to our uh, the joint effort of our global tech team and the local tech team that make us able uh, to offer a true global uh, true global travel platform now in China. Fantastic news. Thanks, Calvin. Um, Puneet, I'm just going to come back to you for a second because in India, we've always seen a localization of systems and content specifically to fit the traveler's needs um, in, in your market. What recent investments are you seeing or needs are you seeing in technology um, in India at the moment? Uh, yes, Vicky. So, uh, Vicky, as we all understand that tech is ever evolving space and from a TMC perspective, we have always taken a stand and that, you know, we will continue our initiatives on this front and irrespective of pandemic situation we have gone through, it's imperative for us to continue our focus and investments here. Thankfully, uh, from global to local level, we have a very consistent approach when it comes to technology. Uh, we have been using uh, Conquer as our partner uh, and and the local technology called Phoenix, a tool in India for nearly a decade now. And we have kept on upgrading uh, this tool, Phoenix, uh, from time to time basis, the customer's feedback. Uh, however, we anticipated that this present tool has a lot of dependency on the third party. Hence, we thought of investing into a new project called Gemini. Uh, where we shall have better controls, which will also support us delivering better uh, outcome to our customers. So I'm very happy to state that uh, in last six to seven months, uh, since the time we embarked uh, to this new journey of Project Gemini, uh, we have covered a great amount of uh, work on this front. And by July 22, we shall be ready with the launch of phase one. And we will be happy to state that we will be able to launch uh, the, this new tool by Jan early January 23 in the India market. It's very exciting. Thanks, Puneet. We look forward to uh, being able to have a play on the new Gemini tool. Um, just to stick with you for a minute, we talk a lot at FCM about blending the AI and IQ experience. So the best of technology, but also the best of our people. Um, we know that uh, all markets had to scale down through the pandemic. Um, we've got several offices across uh, different locations in India. Tell us a little bit about um, what you've been focusing on, on uh, the journey of recruitment, retraining, and getting back to a space of delivering a consistent customer experience, utilizing not just the technology, but also our people on the ground. Uh, so yeah, as I said, you know, last month we did about 107 percent. You can you can very well understand our people works team is quite busy in hiring people. Uh, so uh, there is there is almost a demand of nearly 120 people to be added, uh, and we, we have uh, done a little bit of success on that front. We have nearly about 30 percent success rate where we have already hired people. We have 10 offices all across India uh, and. As you have rightly mentioned that, you know, we have scaled down due to pandemic, but now since the travel is coming back, so we are again scaling it up in terms of manpower. And coming back to your question that how we are managing in terms of technology and the people. So as I said in the beginning that India is a high touch market, hence uh, the personal approach is very much needed uh, and travel itself is very personal to each and every traveler. Uh, starting from selecting an airline, seat, meal, and so on. So to manage seamless travel, we, we need superior technology. And to run that technology, we need people. And our people have all, has always been uh, our strength to make a difference in everything what we do. So the say-do ratio has always been very high uh, when it comes to FCM. Uh, Hence, there is no substitute to people. Uh, managing a balance between the two uh, will be of great importance. That is, uh, people, technology uh, is, is what we are aiming at. 
and further to manage this equilibrium uh, we invest a lot in term in terms of lnd through our amazing people works team uh, lastly i just wanted to uh, mention few examples uh, for for what i have just covered so we we can create a car booking through a request form on the tool how however as per the market norms we need to follow up and reconfirm the required uh, booking through our people hence we need that human touch so we need to maintain that balance similarly if we look at uh, all travelers through our fc car program each passenger is called by our team to ensure that uh, the quality car has been uh, given to them and they, they reach uh, to their destination on time and that that again gets reported as a qc process and last example on the visa front uh, through our in house visa team we we manage visas hence it reduces the dependency on the third party and also uh, their respective technologies excellent thanks pinit you mentioned um, a word in their balance which i think is really important as well and I know while we talk about uh, technology and getting our clients back onto adopting technology, online booking tools, et cetera, it's really, really important that we've got good teams and good people that can support that in the background and give the reassurance when it's needed um, on phone and email to make sure that all the questions are covered to, to rebuild that confidence. So balance of people and technology is something that is a big focus for us. Thanks a lot for that. Um, just a quick last question for each of you, quick fire round. Where do you see um, the traveler experience and the focus going in your particular market in the future, the next five to 10 years? What's one area that you see will be a major focus? Uh, let's start with you, Ken. Okay, thank you, Becky. Um, yeah, obviously, digital tool in Japan uh, will become a must have item. And uh, also, um, air carrier, uh, rail, and taxi, and the uh, hotel, and even the small uh, Japanese inn, and the uh, combination of those like mice. Um, we have uh, uh, those suppliers in the uh, uh, Japanese industry. And uh, in the future, all those are uh, different uh, supplier. Uh, it's becoming a one seamless uh, platform. I, and uh, because uh, uh, definitely those are uh, uh, seamless platform uh, can deliver uh, the convenience to the uh, traveler and also the company. And obviously uh, without those uh, seamless experience, company cannot survive. And uh, this can be said uh, not only just big hotels, but uh, we can say uh, uh, also for the small hot hot spring Japanese in. So uh, I think in the future, uh, everything can be, how can, how can I say, everything can be uh, find out uh, from uh, uh, one platform, which uh, FCM, of course, FCM, FCM can provide. So those are the, uh, I think, future in Japan, because uh, even now, there's a uh, very difficult to find all those uh, small ins. And also there's a, a lot of, uh, uh, how can I say, fun, and also a lot of uh, opportunity that uh, we can have a good meeting or a good relationship with the customer to having a meeting uh, in those kind of uh, places. So having said that, uh, uh, we as FCM, uh, we can provide uh, all those uh, digital tools even in uh, five years later, 10 years later, and uh, I think we can keep providing uh, uh, convenience to the uh, uh, company and uh, also the uh, travelers as well. Thank Thanks, you. Ken. A lot of good opportunities to come there on technology. Uh, Puneet, over to you. Five to 10 years. Biggest focus for travel in India. So since you have mentioned it's a rapid fire, so I'll just uh, give you a quick two uh, points uh, we, we we would say that there will be a huge surge in spt adoption and penetration in indian market which is still there but we see uh, a long way you know we need to compete with the western world yes we we are quite far uh, at, at this point of time so if we are at say about say 20 to 30 percent levels in next 10 to 15 uh, years time we will be in the range of say 50 percent levels plus 
secondly uh, on the electronic payment solutions uh, more adoption will be there in the indian market we again see that uh, india market if we compare to the western world is a little uh, behind when it comes to adoption of electronic payment solutions so this these are the two areas where i feel thanks punit and uh, finishing up with you kelvin what do you see for the future in china yeah i think uh, uh, i have very brief answer i'm thinking of metaverse um it's a popular word uh, recently but uh, actually i'm not meaning that um we are going to build some virtual travel yet from fcm uh cuz i don't believe metaverse will anytime soon kill the real world of travel uh but i think it's highly possible that in the near future you might see some scenarios coming uh in a hybrid model uh for example uh if you travel to uh, just imagine you travel to a uh, economic hotel and you have like uh, only five floors in that hotel uh, all of them are guest rooms without any entertainment facilities so that's for a business travel could be quite boring right you're going to find something to to do at night time uh, and then suddenly a message popping up in fcm app on your mobile telling you that actually you have another hidden sixth floor uh in this hotel but in the metaverse world and then what would you do i think uh, most people you will start to navigate and uh, uh you start to see actually this sixth floor is a rooftop bar and there's already some travelers sitting there uh enjoy their drinks there are also travelers sitting in the same hotel so probably you will be able to have a chance to talk to somebody in this metaverse uh, and also you can even make yourself uh, an order uh, of your drinks so only to see after 15 minutes maybe there's a robot knocking on your door uh with your handmade cocktail so i think uh, uh, to me it's sort of improvement of traveler experience isn't it okay